Hi everyone, David Maley here from Tech Know How. Today we're going to do something really cool. I'm going to show you how to take JSON data, read it into Python, and then we're going to do some extras with it. We're going to do some little bit of uh, data manipulation with it and plot it and do some fun stuff with it. But let me show you. So first, right off the bat right here, I have a JSON file I'm looking at. Columns are ID, first name, last name, age, salary, position, department, start date. And you can see under here all the different, uh, it's like an array. And you're looking at all of the lists under each. So ID has all these different IDs under it. First name has all these first names under it. Last name has all these and so on. It's kind of ugly, this data, and we need to read it into Python and make it quickly useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through every step of this. So let's start off. We're in uh, Jupyter Notebooks right here, Python 3. And right off the bat, I'm going to load my libraries, right? So at the beginning, I have two libraries. I'm going to bring in NumPy and Pandas, NP and PD. See it right there? So next, we're going to read in the data. When I read it in, I need to know the location. Make sure that your little slashes are in the forward not backwards. If they're backwards, they'll give you an error. Um, so in this case, what I'm doing is I'm DF1 is my data frame one. I'm doing PD, which is the pandas, function of read underscore JSON. And here is my location for that file. Now your location is going to be different on your computer. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Just get the location. You can right click on your file and get the location of any file on your laptop. So next, once you have that, we're going to sort it. I want to sort it want to have it sorted already you don't have to do this part but I'm showing you how to do it some extras I want you to know that you need to know for data manipulation and exploratory data analysis and stuff like that which are necessary for data analytics and data science so we're gonna put everything when we do stuff I like to show you to put it into a new data frame so if I mess something up if I blow something up whatever it gets deleted I lose some data not with this we won't but if I do it's a, it's a process you put in place so that I always have I don't have to go back and start all over again I got a new data frame so look at this right here. I have DF2, data frame 2, equals DF1 dot sort the value, sort underscore values of pick your column. So in this case, it's salary. You put that in quotation marks. Make sure it matches correctly, capital S. And then ascending equals, in this case, true. If it was false, then I have descending. Okay? Now what I want here is ascending. Then I have DF2, data frame 2, and I want to look at the top six rows. Head is top, tails is back or the, the bottom and then n equals six equals six that i'm going to return so i'm returning six of them one two three four five six now keep in mind over here the index that it automatically gives you will not be one two three four five six it's going to be um in a different order because i already did this ascending equals true and that's the difference there so make sure that um when you look at it after you do ascending equals true or ascending, ascending equals false and you're resorting your stuff that you don't get you know, flustered, oh, it's not zero through, uh, through five anymore. It's not going to be. It shouldn't be, okay, because you reorder it. So once I do this, I display the head. Look at this. I have my data right here. I have uh, the ID, first name, last name, age, salary, position, department, and start date. It's all there correctly. Okay, and look at the salary. It starts at the bottom and goes on up. See it? So it's in order correctly the way we'd want. Next, what I want to do is I want to cast the salary, right? Because I don't want it to be just numbers like this. And it's actually string behind here. So what I want to do is I want to show you two different things of casting right here. So I've got these two right here. And the first one is if I just want to do it to numeric, right? So this just becomes numeric 46,910. You know, without a comma there, it's just numeric. Um, I do this, PD.2 underscore numeric, DF2 for data frame 2 of salary. Make sure these are in uh, blocks like this. Let me get off of that. And um, so you're going to do that, salary equals salary by this way. And then the other way is if I want to do a currency, it's a little bit funky looking in Python, but it works great, is this one right here. So you've got data frame 2 salary, same way equals data frame to salary dot apply. We're applying the lambda of X. And you've got F quotation mark, dollar sign, and then X out one, over 1,000, X divided by 1,000. Then you've got a colon, a dot, one F, and K. And what this does is this, it's a little bit weird how it's written out, but that's, it works. This puts it into currency format. 
in by thousands so that there'll be a comma at the thousands. So when I do that, you can see I've run it. There's no issues. And I'll show you later on how it looks. So then it might help if I spell quickly correctly. Um, so here, then we want to graph it, right? So I have my data. I have it in there. I've reordered it. And I have it in currency format now for the uh, column of salary. And then all I want to do is graph it. Graphing is as simple as putting lines equals df2.plot.line. And then put your x and your y coordinates up. So your x is salary in this case and my y is age. When I do this, I get this graph. and It looks great. I mean, I can go and make it look a little bit more professional. If I want to put a header on all, or a title on it and stuff, I'm not going to worry about it. That's not the purpose of this video. Okay, so I'm showing you this and right above it, oh, look at this. There's this weird little warning here. It doesn't really matter much. It's just telling me it should be used together with a fixed locator, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to see that. So how do I get rid of that? Right here. Put import warnings. Warnings.filter warnings of ignore. Just like that, it gets rid of that warning. It's out of there, so it's professional looking. And look at that line, or at least more professional looking. Lines equals df2.plotline x salary y age. Same as above. Look at that. There's no warning there. See, without that, I've got this, which I don't want to have. And and I've got this without the warning. See that? Very simple. We just read in JSON data into Python. I showed you how to do I showed you how to load it up. We got it to sort it. by. So we did a bunch of stuff here. We loaded JSON data. We sorted the data uh, in ascending order. We showed you how to display the data, the top six, head equals six. And we went and cast the salary to numeric, and I showed you how to do that, and then to currency. And then I also showed you how to graph it. And when you look down at the bottom here, that's currency. See, it's got dollar sign in front of it, 46.9,000, 65.5,000, and so on. Okay? And same with here. Then we showed you how to remove the funky warnings that you sometimes get in Python and Jupyter Notebooks. Hope you found this informational and helpful. And, uh, you know, this great stuff to know if you want to go into uh, – data science, data analytics. Um, try this out. Have some fun with it. And uh, thanks again for watching and have a great day. And make sure you take time to subscribe too so you'll see all my other great videos I got coming out. Thanks again. Have a great day.